Hey, welcome everybody. Good morning. Thank you for joining me. Today we're talking about Home Advisor. It's entitled Increasing Profits with Home Advisor. Really want to create some great content for you. I know uh, I've seen many of you register. I know many of you are using Home Advisor. There are some tricks of the trade. So we have a lot of great stuff to cover. What we're going to cover, uh, kind of an overview here, common concerns about Home Advisor. Um, the important aspects of an account setup and why, uh, what monthly activities you need to be doing, best practices, when leads come in, and then I want to mention some things about the sales process. Tons of little details in between here. Um, please take notes. Because it's great stuff, I would ask you, you know, we live in a busy world, if you could just for the next whatever it is, 30, 45 minutes, kind of shut down any kind of notifications, Facebook, cell phone, and so on. I think it's going to be a really good, uh, worthy investment to just try to get the most out of this. And if you stay to the end, I have a couple of things for you. I have a cheat sheet of all my notes, any kind of resources, what you won't get on the webinar that's on the cheat sheet is kind of uh, like where to go to your account to identify the various pieces of information that I, that I am asking or recommending you to check on. Um, before I go any further, can everybody hear me okay and see me okay? Done that before, right? You guys, can everyone, can you put in chat and say, um, you can see me and hear me okay? Come on, I know you're out there. Sweet. Thank you, many of you. You all chimed in at the same time. Awesome, thank you. Okay, uh, let's see. I have a checklist and then I also have a, um, it's from Home Advisor and it's their kind of a guidelines of, of lead credits. You know, this qualifies for a lead credit and this not so, okay? So those are two great things. Hang, the, hang in there with me. Uh, quick background about myself. I've been in this space for 25 years. I own Rainmaker for internet marketing and Rainmaker Contractors. We do uh, full service digital marketing for primarily basement waterproofing, uh, some foundation repair folks. I do have a podcast, Rainmaker for Contractors podcast. There is one coming up on Tuesday where I have an executive rep for the Basement Health Association from Home Advisor on Tuesday that will, that will be published. A lot of good ins and outs. She did help contribute to this webinar. Let's see, I'm a little bit unique from a, mar uh, from a digital marketer standpoint. I did own my own company for 15 years. I learned this business spending my own money, not experimenting with someone else's. Um, we are an award-winning agency. Google's flown me to their headquarters a few times. Um, I'm very involved with the Basement Health Association, former president, 13 year uh, board member. Yeah, most importantly, we specialize with working with basement waterproofing people in foundation repair. And when you really focus on one thing, you kind of get good at, at just that one thing and try to, instead of trying to spread yourself too thin. Uh, little, the last slide I'll mention about ourselves for a while, maybe the whole thing is this is kind of our model to help create uh, dominance for our clients. So we start with a, a website that converts into leads we take care of local SEO and we continue to build that out. We do Google ads, Facebook, your reviews are absolutely critical. We provide all of our clients with a, a way to text and email um, requests to get reviews. Uh, we nurture, we do social posts, uh, and then we believe in ROI, return on investment for your advertising spend. Having been a contractor, this is how I think, what am I spending, what am I getting in return? Our tracking, you could track uh, four or five different levels with call recording, and it's a beautiful thing. That's what we do. Okay, quick question for you. Who uses Home Advisor now? And I'm gonna ask you to type into the chat. Um, one for yes, two for no, and three for tire kick and thinking about it. If you could type in there, that'd be awesome. Great job, thank you. Rolling in, I'm thinking there's gonna be a lot of ones. All right, okay, cool. That's great. Uh, so not everyone is a one. Um, good, I, we have 
good, good audience here. All right, whether you are using HomeAdvisor or have used HomeAdvisor, what's your biggest frustration? What just annoys the crud out of you when you're using HomeAdvisor? And if you would be so kind to type that in the chat, that would be great. It could be, it could be bogus leads. It could be they're selling the lead to 15 contractors. Uh, I'd love to hear what a uh, frustration or two of yours is. All right. I just got a taste of um, two big ones. One is you can't get in touch with the lead. Don't you love that? You just spend 50 bucks for a lead and then you can't get in touch with it. Or better yet, you get a bogus lead and they charge you. You know, they have your credit card number and boom, there you go. And now you play the game of trying to get in touch with HomeAdvisor to say, please give me that lead credit. I'm like, no, we just want to charge you for bogus lead. That happens. It does. Uh, I'm going to cover. I'm going to cover all that and a whole lot more. So good. And thanks for that uh, feedback. Appreciate it. All right. Some common misconceptions. I've talked to a lot of um, contractors over the years. And some love home advisor used to be called service magic. I've used them when I had my business and, and some, you know, have used them and will never use them again. They had two bad experiences and different occasions and so on. And these are some of the concerns that I have or that I've seen. Um, you know, I heard this a lot home advisor customers only want the lowest price. Truth is at this stage of the game, home advisor is really too mainstream and they appeal to too many people. Home advisor spends close to a hundred million dollars a year in advertising with uh, TV commercials, radio and billboards and so on. So I just think they're too far out there. Uh, maybe back in the day when someone wanted like a lot of quotes, I don't think that exists anymore. Second misconception is home advisor sells my leads to too many other contractors. All right. So, I'll, I'll explain this in a second, but there's two types of common leads. One is called market match and one is called exact match. I'll explain that later, but when it's a market match lead, they are selling that lead to four contractors. And believe me, they're, you know, they have a computer system and an algorithm that will try to push that lead out to four people and they have contract, you know, you know, they have your credit card, right? So they know to, um, they're going to charge your card. They're going to get it. Now there was a program called the Elite 360, and some contractors would pay a, a large, you know, just crazy amounts of money every month. It was a 12-month contract, and they would get every lead under a certain amount of categories. So technically, there was a time when when Home Advisor was selling that lead to five contractors. Elite 360 has been phased out, and um, so it's really only down to four. Um, Sometimes a homeowner will fill out their information on another website that might be owned by Home Advisor. Home Advisor is smart, so they have more than just the Home Advisor platform to, to do lead gen. So sometimes a Home Advisor will fill another portal out too. And so then Home Advisor is, is selling off of that one. So that does happen. But if it's just Home Advisor, it's going to be um, poor contractors. Just kind of got to know how it works. Oh, and just one more comment, you know, half the time, like, you know, frustration is you don't get in touch with them. Half the time, the contract, the, the, the customer, they're not going to want to deal with four contractors. And sometimes contractors don't even show up or they just get busy or they prejudge the lead based on the information that don't bother calling it. So you know, keep that in mind. If you just work your leads and stay consistent and work them all, uh, you could you could really win big with Home Advisor. All right, so Home Advisor sends me bad leads. So someone type that in the chat. Thank you for that feedback. Um, like any lead source, there's definitely going to be some bad leads um, and there's going to be some good leads. And you kind of got to take both. And it gets challenging when you're on the front lines, but you really got to back up. Um, if you're doing monthly reports, you can look at that cost percentage over net sales and you could say, OK, is, is this a number that is acceptable? and try to work under those parameters. You're definitely going to get some bad leads um, in this scenario. Let me unpack this just a little bit for those that say, 
oh, I've used Home Advisor and uh, I don't want to use them. We get too many crappy leads. And I've had several of those conversations with owners. And they're typically owners that run their own leads. And I could almost envision them looking at a lead and saying, dang, I do not want to go, um, you know, to the other side of wherever to run that lead. And you're going to get those, right? But the thing is, um, if you buy six leads from Home Advisor, and let's say all six leads cost uh, $50 each, right? Let's say two of those leads, they didn't even get, you didn't even get in touch with them. They wouldn't return your phone call. So now you're down to four leads. Two of the leads, you know, let's say one was a renter and one was a leaky pipe. It happens, right? And now, now you're down to the last two out of the six. And let's say one was a decent presentation and you didn't do, um, you know, you did okay, you didn't sell it. And then the other one was um, a sale. So, all right, you bought six leads and you sold one. Those leads cost $300. Let's say you sold the job for 8,000. I don't think there's a contractor in the United States that wouldn't spend $300 for an $8,000 job because that uh, cost percentage of net sales comes in at under 4%, which is an amazing percentage. So you just got to keep that in mind, but I can totally understand that it gets frustrating that you get these leads and you're like, what is the thought process here? Okay, so all that to say Home Advisor overall can be a, just a great uh, lead source. I'm going to talk about account setup. So here's the thing about account setup. I have this little note here and says, why is account setup so important? It's because of exact match leads. And I think as I'm listening to myself talk, I need to unpack these two different lead sources from Home Advisor. When you set up an account, they're going to say, how much do you want for a budget of exact match leads? And how much do you want of a budget for market match leads? Exact match leads are the leads where the homeowner person, now let me reword that, the customer is looking at your profile and they click a box that says, I only want that company. Now, please don't put my information into your portal and sell this lead to four other, three other contracts or whatever. I only want to talk to them. So that's an exact match. Market match is those leads are going to go to four contractors and hopefully you're one of them. So obviously it's good to get more exact match leads, right? So the more complete profile that you have and the more that you can connect with people and decorate that. I mean, if you think about your website, everyone that I work with has an about us. And it's like, here's who we are. Here's our story. Here's our staff. Here's some pictures. Why do you do that? Because you want them to connect with you. You want them to like you before as they're shopping on who to pick. So the same thing is true with your home advisor uh, profile. You want those photos of your staff and your office, and you especially want those before and after photos. So those are good to, to put in there. You're definitely going to want a lot of reviews. Um, I'm going to jump to the first one. It says complete most of your profile. I don't think I've ever seen a complete Home Advisor profile. There's a lot of little details to chase. So if you don't get a complete profile, don't sweat it. Don't worry about it. I've seen some companies do really, really well. Uh, not having a, you know, in fact, I told you already, like, I've never seen one. What's more important is you have those photos, you have information about you and you're trying to connect with them and then you have a lot of reviews. And then lastly, don't disqualify yourself by having an expired uh, certificate of insurance on your account. Really important, people check that stuff. They just will skip your account and not even call you. And maybe that's not why they're not calling back, who knows. Okay, so, uh, so I just unpacked this market match versus exact match. I had a situation a couple weeks ago where a client of ours was saying, we have a pretty big budget for Home Advisor, but we're not getting many leads. It was something like our budget is $3,000 a month. And I said, you know, that doesn't sound right because Home Advisor is pretty good at taking money off your credit card like Google is. So 
I set up a call with Home Advisor and myself and our, our client, and we talked about it. And here's what was going on. There was $2,000 assigned to exact match, and there was $1,000 assigned to market match. The problem is they were only getting, you know, four or five leads per month on exact match. So the market match budget was maxing out at a thousand. So although the person thought they had a $3,000 budget set up for home advisor, there was really only a thousand set up for market match and the budget was maxing out and they weren't getting any leads. So they were only spending maybe 1200. So you really need to know your budgets for this. Um, it's interesting that sometimes when you call customer service and you set up the account, they will push you to have a higher budget for exact match. Why they do that, I don't know. I mean, I know that they're charging you more. They're charging you 1.5 more for that lead versus market match. But truth of the matter is, you know, unless you have some crazy branding in your market where everybody knows your name, um, or you have just crazy review, like you have two, three, 400 reviews and you're just going to get a ton of uh, exact match leads. You got to realize that the majority of your leads will come in through, through market match. So something to be really uh, aware of. All right. So these are our favorite accounts. If, if you're a customer of ours and I've seen some of you registered and uh, I can, I mean, we audit, we've audited this. I think our last audit was uh, like 30 to 45 days ago and your account will have these. And some of you may have different accounts or categories. Your category really matters. And this is what the customer picks when they're selecting what kind of service they need. So, it, you know, it's interesting for basement waterproofing, there's two or three under, under plumbing. And the word plumbing and basic waterproofing sets off alarms because it, we're immediately thinking not eligible and eh, we don't want it. Truth of the matter is the way that Home Advisor has it set up is they have some, you know, basement waterproofing stuff under a category called plumbing. It is what it is. It's a great source of leads. I'd recommend it. Um, I'm going to throw a qualifier out here. One or two of these, if you're a basement waterproofing company, uh, might not work for you. So, um, you know, you got to look at the data and you have to do what makes sense for you. The other thing I would say is some of you do additional services and you should not just be in here. Like maybe you do egress windows or some other kind of uh, foundational repair, or maybe you do remodeling or kitchen or bathrooms. That's totally separate, but you do need to, you know, the point here is you need to be aware of the categories. Now I have a note on the right, it says add special of the month. This is something that I have not seen a lot of people do. And you can have uh, like a promo or a coupon for the month and you could theme it. Like you could have a July 4th special coming up and run it from now till July 4th or whatever it is, Memorial Day weekend promo. Uh, and you put it in there and that, that kind of draws people. People are drawn to that because if no one else is offering a, a promo and they're thinking all things are equal, well, this company's got the promo why don't we at least see what they have going on? So if you're looking for that little edge and a way to just add one more layer is just kind of come up with some kind of a promo and put an expiration date on it. All right, uh, let's see. The last uh, item I have for account setup is Home Advisor gives you a lot of badges. If you look under your profile in your Home Advisor account, here's some badges that you might see. Now the hundred reviews one, you know, that's earned. They're not just going to give that to everybody. 10 years, um, you know, this, this, this person's been with Home Advisor for quite a bit. Now I say add some of the Home Advisor badges because there's too many of them, right? Like you can't cover your whole website with all these badges. So I would find, you know, maybe two at the most three. It kind of depends on what you have. You don't want it to be dominated by, by Home Advisor. But take advantage of those badges because when they're on your website, they could help your lead flow for other reasons because they're they're saying, oh, I've seen this badge. This company gets around. Uh, it just adds credibility. Credibility is absolutely important when you're talking about uh, lead flow. All right. So some monthly activities we have here, uh, lead credits. So here are common lead credit um, categories. If Home Advisor ever sends you the wrong address or the wrong phone number, that should be a gimme. You're going to get a lead credit. And 
our average that I've seen is, you know, you're paying about 50 bucks a lead when it all comes out. These different categories I showed you, they charge different amounts in different cities based on demand and so on. It varies overall. It's just, it's something like $48.50. Overall, just think in your head, 50 bucks. So if you're not getting lead credit and you don't have a system to get lead credits, when these errors happen, you're leaving a lot of money on the table. Second one, zip code not in the coverage area. Let's say it's just a typo. Let's say your zip code is you know, 23010 and they type in 23011 and that happens to be a little bit outside of your territory that you're covering. And you're like, dang, I got to lead this way out there. I don't even want to go there. It's not your coverage area, get the lead credit. Um, it's a category that you do not provide. I'm going to talk about this one a little bit. Make a little asterisk in your head there because we all get these if you're a home advisor person. Duplicate lead from home advisor. So they might have signed up a year ago, three years ago with home advisor and they didn't make a decision. We all know homeowners don't like to make decisions and they still have the problem in their basement cracked more and it rained more and they got more damage. So they're now again at the home advisor portal. If home advisor sends you a lead again, that's a lead credit. Um, how are you gonna keep track of if someone filled out a lead three years ago? That's on you. I don't know how to answer that one unless you have a good CRM system. The leads on an off issue. So sometimes a contractor will say, I want no more leads after let's say May 26th and home advisor sends you a couple leads that is a lead credit issue. You had asked your leads to be turned off. Home Advisor sent the leads anyway. You got charged. You need to get uh, a rebate on that. And then sometimes the last one, contractors like to test out how the system works, especially when they're newer. So they fill out a form. You know, Home Advisor asked you not to do this, but if you find out it's just a contractor going, oh, sorry, man. I was just kind of seeing how this thing works. Um, that's a lead credit thing. All right, I'm going to come back to an issue. I'm going to jump to this one. You're going to get these, um, these leads with the wrong category. And sometimes the homeowner doesn't know it's the wrong category, like an over the top problem based on waterproofing. It's like, that's generally, you know, a landscaping issue that dirt's too high. It rains, water comes over the top of the foundation. It comes out, you know, waterproofers generally don't fix those. Uh, a leaky pipe, you know, that's a plumbing issue. It's not a basement waterproofing issue, right? Um, wrong type of work, sump pump. There, there's a funny category they have. I showed it a few slides back. It says, it says uh, sump pump or drain tile replacement. Okay, well, sometimes sump pump means, well, I was going to go to Home Depot, but I thought I'd just fill this thing out at, on Home Advisor and they're thinking it's going to be like a hundred, maybe two hundred dollar fix. You can change out their pump, and then then the same exact wording it says replace drain tile, which is you know easily an eight, twelve, who knows, twenty thousand dollar job. It's just where home advisors at. I've given them feedback to change that, but you're going to get them. When you get these, um, official word is don't submit them for a lead credit. Call first. Call the customer service rep. I'll give you the phone number. I'm sure you have it. But the thing is, when you submit for a lead credit and it's one of those, it shouldn't be a gray area, but I was told it's kind of a gray area. When you do that and then the, the rep at Home Advisor marks that as denied, and now you call and say, wait a minute, this was a leaky pipe and you charged us. We're not a friggin' plumbing company, right? Like totally frustrating. It's in their system, it's a little bit harder to like undeny a lead when it's been denied. So I've been told to work the angles, you've got to call your rep first on those and don't submit them for lead credit. Make note of that because that could be some good money. All right. The other thing I'd say is, you know, you've got to have a system and you got to be disciplined and you got to be organized. We work with a lot of different companies. I've done it myself. We know what it's like. It's slower. You're totally fine. You're in control. Then it rains. Then all your lead sources go off the hook. Now these leads are coming in left and right. And you just don't have time. You don't have time to be organized and, and you can't really remember which leads you submitted for request and so on. 
So you really have to have systems and you have to be disciplined, whether it's busy or not busy, to keep these systems in place so that you're getting lead credit and you're staying organized and you're not wasting good money. All right, so I like doing this, not all the time, but sometimes. Reconcile which, which categories are selling for a lot of reasons, um, mostly for this quote. What you can measure, you can improve on. And I'll, I'll come back to that quote, but if I, if I go back up here, if we could pay attention to what categories are really bringing in sales and which ones aren't, it may make sense to shut off some of those, you know, maybe one or two of those categories and then, you know, stop wasting money. Uh, but make sure if you're gonna do that, make sure you're testing it. It also might make sense that when you see, you know, one or two of those categories, and you know you're getting more sales from those categories than any other category, you know, maybe that's, oh, I better send out, you know, the rep that I know is going to bring that deal back home. Um, all right, another point, review your lead credit request and audit, and then call on the ones that should have been credited. You sometimes have to call, and they're going to say no on some of them, and they're going to say yes on other ones. But keep your documentation Here's the phone number. Sometimes you get a rep that's easier than other reps. It's just how it is, but you've got to do the uh, you got to do the work. All right, I like this. It could be applied to so many things. What you can measure, you can improve. If you think about um, like how fast you're calling, um, the categories, your sales reps. I I'm going to talk a little bit about this this saying uh, later on. So more monthly activities, call home advisor customer service to review market match and exact match budgets. It's good just to check every now and then call, just kind of say, hey, I'm just trying to optimize my account. Do you see anything on your end that might get us more leads? It's worth calling. All right, so now if you don't know it, if you belong to the Basement Health Association, you do get a 7% rebate. The next rebate is in mid-July. It shows up in the middle of your statement. There's a little line item, you know, look for the bigger number. If you're working the system, you just make sure it's there, work the bigger number. Typically, once you're in the system, you don't file out unless you are no longer a basement health member. Um, boy, it's definitely, it's definitely worth, um, you know, being a member. And if you're someone saying, wait, you know, what is BHA and what is 7% rebate? Can you say more? Quick blurb for the Basement Health Association. Annual membership is only $395 a year. It comes with a 7% home advisor rebate. We're working on getting this increased. We're close. It would be a fairly decent jump. Um, can't make that promise. I've been, I can tell you that uh, we've been working on that for for a while, but I think we're very close. I can offer you this. If you are on the fence about HomeAdvisor, there is a promo going on right now. And that's if you spend up to $300 uh, on market match leads, they'll give you $600 worth of credits. And that promo is good till June 25th. So if you're interested, please contact me. And if there's any other deals I can get you, I will. Sometimes I could do that. And if, I, you know, if you're thinking, gee, do I, do I join Basement Health Association just for the 7% credit? If you only spend $470 a month on HomeAdvisor, it pays for the membership right there. So it's definitely worth it. All right. What to do, uh, what are some best practices when the leads come in? All right, when a lead comes in, you know, we used to say call within 15 minutes. I'm just gonna say call it right away. Not 15 minutes, not 10 minutes. Try to call it within five minutes. This is super important. And we all know, you know, I know there's some schedulers on this on this webinar, and we all know it's a, it's a stinking race, right? You know, you call them, and sometimes they put that call on hold, and they say, I'm on the line with another contractor. It's like, damn, they beat me to it. I mean, it happens, right? So just the faster you can call them, the better off you are. And then when you get them, it may be your 200th call of the day, but try to put yourself in the other person's shoes and realize it, no one likes to give their information out to a computer. 
not really knowing what to expect. So for them, it's a big deal. And they probably had this problem in their basement for a while. And they finally mustered enough courage to give their information to some lead portal named Home Advisor. And they're waiting for the call. And realizing that they're going to get several calls, I would say, even if it's your 200th call of the day, try to really work hard to connect with the homeowner. Try to slow down. If you hear a dog barking in the background, ask them about their dog and what kind of dog it is. If you hear their kids in the background, just acknowledge it. Try to connect with them. Um, don't be rushed. I know if you're in a bigger waterproofing company, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of leads to get to. But those first impressions are just absolutely critical. And your, your phone voice, your voice inflection, your ability to connect, all really, really critical. And the better you can do, the better you're going to connect with the homeowner. And people have these conversations like, oh, they sounded really good on the phone. Let's definitely connect with them. First impressions are huge. So just keep that in mind. Your role is super important just on that very first phone call. All right. Um, so, you know, a lot of times you're leaving messages, right? Best practice really is to follow up with a text and follow up with, with an email. So I recommend to stay on that lead uh, three methods per day for a week. That's, that's a, it's a pain, I know, but that works. And try to make those um, messages personal, like an email and a text you can you can uh, kind of have that pre-written in you know, the text. You don't want to say like, hey, you fill out a form, call us back, here's our number. You know, try to add a little bit more. Like we do a lot of work in whatever their city is. We'd love to help you out. When you get a minute, please give us a call and we'll set something up. Kind of unpack that a little bit. Try to be relational. The email, you can have a pretty set email. You can slip in some credentials. If you'd like more information, click this link. and. Maybe it's an about us page or some of your reviews. You, you just want to do that. That's going to be a best practice. Um, I've talked to several contractors. I'll, I'll ask them, what percentage of leads do you get in touch with from a home advisor? And they'll say, I've heard everything from 50 to like 85 or 90 all over there. And I've heard several homeowner, sorry, several contractors say they only get in touch with about 50% of the leads that they buy. It's just, um, it's part of the gig. All right, some more best practices. You know, we're getting a little bit into your system, but you got to qualify the lead. You know, um, accept the fact that there's not going to all be good leads. You're going to kind of get some what appears to be weaker leads. Now, I come from the mindset that, you know, if you have in our world is you have both homeowners, you have an eligible problem, you know, they speak English, they have a job, uh, that's an eligible lead. As far as how much damage, like, you know, do a thorough inspection, right? Uh, they don't, they're not going to play all their cards on the phone. They kind of want to, they have that small problem, small price mentality on the phone. So you really don't know. Now, granted, when you get more expressive people filling out lead forms and they say, I have mold grown on the walls and we get six inches of water, you know, there's problems out there that, come from people that are maybe not as expressive and they're withholding some of that information. So it's really up to the sales rep to, to get out there and to do a good job. But as far as frustration with leads, you've got to accept the fact that you're just going to get weak leads. So Michael Gerber's famous line, work on your business, not in your business, whether you're an owner or whether you're on the front line scheduling, you've got to kind of uh, keep that distance almost from your work to say, you know, I don't really know if there's a good leader, bad leader. You've got to, you've got to use your judgment, but then overall, the big picture, you've got to look at what your leads are costing, what your net percentage of sales are in relation to cost, um, which I'll cover in a second. So try to keep that big picture. It's overall, it's a great lead source. All right. So when to schedule, I recommend scheduling appointments within one to three days. I think that people are in action mode. They want to get this fixed. They want a reputable company. They want a, a, a person that they trust and like, and they need a decent price and you got a customer. Now, is it more complicated than that at times? Absolutely. 
but I think you're doing a disservice when you're scheduling out 10 days or two weeks and you're putting these home advisor leads on the back of the schedule. I think sometimes you've got to like rearrange things and figure out a way to get there sooner. Because if you're thinking, well, I'm going to put them at the end of the line or we're too busy, I don't think there's going to be a second and third kind of, I want to be, you know, sometimes reps are like, well, let me be the third one out because people like to get three estimates. So get someone out there right away. A couple more sales pointers. Um, you know, I, I can't change your, how you do scheduling. I mean, I know a lot of companies will give the leads to the rep and the rep has a certain amount of time to work the leads. Um, I didn't come from that school. Um, so I always believe in confirming the lead the day before. And as far as the sales rep, you know, they, they've got to be thorough. They've got to just like that person that you, maybe you're taking the phone call and you're very present and you're a good listener and you're trying to connect with the homeowner. You know, the same thing is true with the salesperson or the inspector or whatever you want to call them. They need to be very thorough. They need to do an inside outside inspection and use, you know, your proven sales process and, and fall back on that. I'm a big believer, like, boy, you know, when you give reps too many leads in a day, there's just a, an emotional and psychological limitation of the amount of energy that they can produce to connect with people. And you do that for too many days and they just, uh, you know, they, they kind of take shortcuts, like not because they're bad people, it's just because they have limitations, right? And so, you know, try to keep your reps fresh as best as you can um, so that they can do a thorough job and don't prejudge and just, you know, A to Z in every lead. Make it easy to buy. If you are looking for uh, a new finance company or anything, let me know. I know some good ones. Um, and I am a believer for, especially for home advisor leads, uh, you know, your reps need to be closers. I know there's people out there that like to email contracts um, and they like to follow up. Hey, if that works for you, you know, keep doing it, I guess. But if it's not working, you know, change it up. My thought process is a homeowner is in action mode. The rep went out there. There's not a rep in the industry that uh, doesn't try to find new stuff and try to be thorough. You know, if they're trying to sell the deal, they know they have to do that. And you have all the emotional triggers that are present and all the logical, I, like I understand why I needed to get this taken care of. And it's all there and the homeowner is ready to buy. And the rep says, you know, that sounds really good. I can email you the contract within and like, give me 24 to 48 hours and you'll have it. Can I confirm your email address? Okay. A lot can happen in 24 to 48 hours. So um, I'm just not a believer in that system, but um, if there's a way to like give everything right there and send out the closer, I think that's your best shot to maximize your profits for, uh, with home advisor, you know, again, what you measure, you can improve that gets into the sales process that gets into, you know, I, when I talk to reps, sometimes I'll, I'll say, what percentage of leads are you having well, both homeowners in the basement? And it's shocking when I hear, like, it's really hard to do uh, a complete presentation. And to sell that, I think, in my opinion, when you don't have both homeowners in the basement. But all right, so that is uh, that's the majority of the content that I'm covering today. Uh, I will allow for questions. If you are interested in uh, just kind of a free consultation on opportunities and how you can grow your internet marketing, and in fact, you know, I'll, I'm happy to talk to you about Home Advisor and your account as well. But if you want to connect with me and or if you want us to look at your online presence, your your website and so on, um, there's crazy reports that we can run and then I can cover with you kind of a strategy session on, on what you what you could do, whether it's, you know, with us or you want to pass it on to your to your agency. That's fine, too. Um, so there's our contact information.